Sneaking into one of Soviet Russia's most secretive and guarded buildings, Hank Rogers's heart pounded as he became increasingly aware of the danger he was in. The Dutch businessman, then 35, had no right to be there, had incorrect travel documents, and if he had been deemed a spy, he could have faced decades of torture in a gulag. But he was desperate to cut a business deal with shadowy figures in the Soviet government that could make or break him. His high-stakes gamble sounds like in Seven Plot, but it is the true story behind Block Blocking Puzzle Tetris, one of the world's most successful and timeless video games. Since its invention in 1984, it has sold more than 520 million copies worldwide and is now set to become a real, ahem, blockbuster with a new movie about its origin. Called simply Tetris, the film stars Brit actor Taron Egerton as Hink and was filmed in Glasgow, which doubles for the bland, brutalist structures of Soviet-era Russia. The film is not the usual Hollywood fare, but Hink says his risky dalliance behind the Iron Curtain has all the makings of a spy thriller. He told The Sun, it's an exciting story. It's like if I went into North Korea today and snuck into the ministry. It was dangerous. It was generally a really stupid idea. But no guts, no glory. Looking back, I'm a bit like James Bond. He does some pretty stupid things and Hank Rogers did too. But if James Bond was caught, he would have ended up in some gulag and been tortured for years and years as they yell, tell me your secrets. Thank God, for me, I didn't have any secrets. The story starts in 1988, when Hink visited a Las Vegas trade show and discovered Tetris, a game designed by Soviet-born Alexei Pajitnov, where players race against the clock to slot square-based shapes into lines to gain points. He was immediately hooked and brokered a deal with the game's apparent licensee to sell the rights to Nintendo for its first handheld console, the Game Boy. But the arrangement was never approved by Pajitnov, nor its Soviet state-owned software developer Electronor Technica, or ELORG, which was prohibited from selling Soviet software. The president of Nintendo America, Minoru Arakawa, called Hink and voiced his doubts about the rights after being offered it by another salesman, who also presumed they had an agreement to sell it. Hink says it was the most stressful moment of his life as he had already had millions of game cartridges manufactured, using land owned by his wife's family as collateral. He recalled, I told him, I'm about to get on a plane and go to Moscow. Give me a shot. He said, okay, I won't make a deal with anybody else. You go for it. In 1989, Hank flew to the Soviet Union to visit ELORG. It was two years before the regime collapsed, and outsiders were deeply distrusted. Indeed, soon after his arrival in the country, an issue with his passport threatened to curtail his visit. But after pleading with the authorities, he was allowed to continue. 